Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm gonna talk about what I learned from outwitting the devil. Let's dive in. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So glad you could join and I appreciate you tuning in and I am here to do my best to give you some value. So today is a special day, not a special day, it's a normal Monday, but what we're going to talk about is what I learned from outwitting the devil. Now, what do I mean by that? So there's a book called Outwitting the Devil written by Napoleon Hill. If you're not familiar with Napoleon Hill, he's the guy that wrote Think and Grow Rich. So if you have not read Think and Grow Rich, highly recommend that you go ahead and read that as well. Uh, but Outwitting the Devil, it came out in 2007 and was released by the Napoleon Hill Foundation. And I recently picked it up, came across my path, and it's absolutely fantastic, super important lessons that have been relevant to my life, especially over the past six weeks. And I wanted to share these lessons with you. Now, it's funny because even today, I feel like the content in some of, or some of the content in this book is very controversial. Like some of the stuff he talks about, uh, the ideologies can be very controversial even today, but the story behind it is uh, Napoleon Hill's wife read it at the time that he wrote the book and said, I don't want you to publish this until I'm dead and my kids are dead because the material is so controversial. She didn't want her family to experience any of the backlash. So a couple important ideas that I wanna to talk to you about today. The first one, he talks about what is called the drift. And what he means by the drift is, and I've heard this phrase used once before in my life when I did an emotional intelligence uh, personal development program up in Los Angeles, California. And basically, and they've done this technology and training all over the United States to just brand it with different names. Uh, the one I did was called MITT, Mastery and Transformational Training. Uh, but if you're in the LA area, look it up. It was beneficial. It is a little bit crazy. It does get a little bit cultish but there was some value that I got out of it. But anyways, they talk about the drift. What the drift is, is the uninspired monotony of life, the going to work every day, hating what you do, not knowing what's next, relationships and job aren't right, you feel stuck in life, you're just drifting through life. You're not living a focused, intentional, and purposeful life. So he talks about the difference between the people who are drifters and non-drifters. The main difference is this. Non-drifters are the sheep, the follow mentality, the go with the flow, do what everyone else is doing, just you know, uh, do this because I was told to do it, not questioning any of the research behind it or doing your own homework, and you just kind of go along again with the trends, whatever is popular at the time or what everyone else is doing. Much easier to be a drifter, but there isn't really a lot of fulfillment in that lifestyle, <clears throat> at least not for me. I'm not someone who's ever taken the beaten, you know, the, the regular normal path. It just wasn't for me. So if you are like me, then you probably are a non-drifter or you're trying to be a non-drifter because really what our society does is it programs us into being drifters. And an example of this, I don't know if you know this, I'm sure you've heard of Andrew Carnegie, uh, the famous steel tycoon from back in the day during the Industrial Revolution. And <clears throat> literally he quotes... He's the one that created, his family created the school system, literally the entire American school system. And what he says is, I want workers, not thinkers. And so our society, whether it's our education system, our government, um, even religious uh, organizations, all these things, are focused on creating people that think and act and are the same because people that think and act and are the same, it's much easier to control their thought processes and their ideologies. And therefore, when they're kept in control, uh, you know, the people at the top can profit and stuff, and I won't get all deep into that. Anyways, that's what he talks about is drifting. So drifting, you're just going about your business day to day, following along with the regular programming that everyone else is that, you know, you, you uh, grow up, you go to college, you get married, you have kids, uh, you work your ass off until you retire, then you enjoy the last 10 years of your life and you die. And that's pretty much what most people do. So that's, again, what we've been brainwashed to do. And most people have fallen into the system and this will bring up the second point of the book which I think is the most powerful one uh, but anyways talking about drifting so if you want to be a non-drifter he talks about non-drifters are the independent thinkers the ones 
who live intentionally and come up with a plan and execute in order to create the life that they want. So you have to identify if you are drifting in life, if you're someone who's just unhappy and you're just going through the monotony and the flow. And again, there's nothing wrong with that because I have a lot of friends, a lot of people, the majority of people just kind of go along with the program, do their thing and they're just in their routine and that's all good and they're happy and everything's cool and their life is full and if that's you, fantastic. But if you're someone who knows that you wanna do something different, you must have the mindset that you will be different. You will not follow the regular plan as everyone else does. And it is challenging. But if you are a non-drifter, you have you realize your God-given power of creation, your ability to create the life that you want. And you must really execute a plan and stick to it and just know that this world, this system is not set up for people to be non-drifters. Because imagine if there's a bunch of independent thinkers who are wealthy and living the life that they want and doing their thing those people are not easily manipulated or controlled because they've developed their own sense of identity away from the collective. So drifting, non-drifting, identify which one you are. If you're watching this, you're probably a non-drifter or maybe you've been drifting, but you need to switch your mindset into the non-drifter mindset. The second principle I'm going to talk about in this book that I feel is the most powerful, at least for me, and this is what's been most relevant in my life over the past six weeks. He talks about this idea of hypnotic rhythm. And basically what hypnotic rhythm is, it is your routine. It's the energy that you carry within your life. Now, again, the way that we are programmed and taught to conform and go to school and get grades and, you know, so we can prove our achievements and get this piece of paper that, you know, is supposed to open all these doors and all these things. It's a rhythm and the whole system is designed to get you to go into this rhythm of monotony of just go to work, come home, you know, play with the kids, go to bed, do it all over again, yada, yada, yada. We wake up, you're 60, you retire and you get to go and travel when you're old and do all these things, um, you know, and sneaking in family vacations and stuff during it. So anyways, hypnotic rhythm is your routine. And... The main idea that I want to communicate in order to give you value is the hypnotic rhythm can work both ways. So he talks about the hypnotic rhythm of a non-drifter and the hypnotic rhythm of a drifter. And this is a principle that you can apply in all parts of your life. So <clears throat> let's take fitness for example, of course. If you have been drifting with your health and you just neglected it, you're just kind of going up, you like to eat a shit ton of sugar, you like to eat a bunch of fat, salty foods, you go out and eat you know, fast food three, four times a week, whatever, and you're just kind of in that rhythm and you wake up and you're super out of shape, you've been drifting and you've been in a hypnotic rhythm. There's habitual behavior over and over. You've literally been hypnotized in order to eat, to drink, to just live your life this way, and therefore your health is a certain way. Now, on the other side, if your health is not good and you look at the people who are really in shape, they are in a different hypnotic rhythm than the people who are overweight, obese, unhappy with their bodies. The people who are in shape have a hypnotic rhythm of getting up, prioritizing sleep, drinking a lot of water, uh, lifting weights, or going and running and being physically active and just leading an active life in general. They have created the hypnotic rhythm of fitness, of empowering themselves with their health. Same thing with your relationship. If you're someone who is married, a long-term relationship, and you're like, it's not what it used to be. It's because now your hypnotic rhythm has been, well, we never go on dates anymore, we have the kids, we never find a babysitter, we don't really, there's no passion, there's no interest, there's no spark in our relationship, I'm getting you know, tired of this and blah, 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 and we have these arguments. Well, you've gotten in that rhythm, so if you want to create a different result, you have to change the rhythm of how your relationship is going. Now, when it comes to business, same thing. And this is why I said it's been so relevant for me in the past six weeks. I had been in such a wonderful hypnotic rhythm when it comes to creating content, uh, and really pushing out content and starting to try to build my brand and my business. But I realized I really wasn't doing a few key things that would push the needle forward. I was in a really poor hypnotic rhythm. And actually, this is the first video that I have filmed and recorded in the past three weeks because I've been in a super shitty hypnotic rhythm. I just have been, you know, I, I've had a lot of painful things happen in my life. Uh, more professional, but it relates to personal, brought up all these triggers and stuff where I just kind of found myself frozen in time. And I was in this hypnotic rhythm of not creating content, of not putting myself out there, of feeling that I don't have what it takes, right? It was the rhythm of my thinking that was uh, 
I was doubting myself, you know, is this for me? Do I still want to do this? You know, went through this whole cycle of thought. Should I just hang it up? Should I go get a normal job and do all these things? And I recognized that this was a pattern. So now what's happening is, and all that happened for a reason, he's, he talks about one of the way to break your hypnotic rhythm is you will often experience pain or a moment of inspiration. And Tony Robbins has something similar. He says we do things to either avoid pain or to seek pleasure. And in order to break up your routine, sometimes it takes a very painful event to kind of jolt you and snap you out of the hypnosis, the hypnotic rhythm you've been in. So if you're experiencing pain in lessons, know that this is meant for you to learn lessons so that you can snap out of your hypnotic rhythm and you can change the trajectory of where you're going and achieve what you want. And that was certainly the case with me. I realized personally, uh, as I share some more, I guess, vulnerable insights, I was being so selfish with my content, with my business, the way I was going about things. It was all about me, 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 me. And of course, if I'm sitting here, me, 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 I'm not really giving value. I'm not really creating the connections and the relationships. I was just focusing on what's in it for me. I was doing all this motivational content with my shirt off and like, you know, yeah, look at me. Blah, blah, blah. And I honestly, my intention was pure. I was trying to inspire and motivate people and really raise the quality of my content. So my intention was pure. But again, I realized the rhythm that I was in was not creating the results that I want. And I had some things happen in my business where it really slapped me in the face and and I kind of st stepped back and I was like, what are you doing, man? Like, this is not you. I was in this rhythm. Um, I am no longer planning on competing in a bodybuilding competition, at least for now, because I realized getting into that hypnotic rhythm, I mean, I wasn't going out. I wasn't being social. I, you know, I wasn't dating. I wasn't doing anything. I just didn't have a life. I would just sleep and train, really grind and then put out this like aggressive, you know, content. You got to do it all or, you know, do it or you're a bitch type, like, you know, content mentality stuff. I'm like, what am I doing, man? Like, how is this really helping people? It's not. And it showed. And then the results or the lack thereof in my business, the lack of connections that I was really able to create reflected in themselves. So all of that painful stuff happened to where I could look at myself and be like, what are you doing, man? This is not you. This is not what you want to do. That's not what the goal is. That's not how you, the best way to go about it. So this painful event snapped me out of the hypnotic rhythm. And now I've been thinking about how to change things, how to go about things. And if you watch me on my Instagram stories, um, you'll see very soon too, even on my YouTube channel, I realized the best way to go about this is life is about relationships. It's not about me. It's about focusing on other people. It's about community. It's about the connections that we make. And since I was thinking about what's in it for me, what's in it for me, of course, I wasn't getting anything in return because it's me, me, me. So everyone I'm interacting with, I'm giving out that energy. That's what I'm getting back. Me, me, me. And everything has changed now. So I feel um, what I'm going to do as far as YouTube goes I'm going to actually go in and work out with friends in the gym and I'm going to interview them, make it about them, the knowledge that they have. I can learn something. You can learn something. It'll be more entertaining. It'll be great for them. It'll be great for you. It won't just be me talking into the camera like this. You'll have some other insights and education. And again, everyone benefits, right? It's not just about me. So this is one example of how hypnotic rhythm is very powerful and we can step out of our routines. So the message I want to share with you is, Whatever you are in right now, stage of life or goal setting or goal achieving that you're in, if you're not where you want to be or on the proper trajectory, you've got to take an honest look at yourself or eventually you have to look the painful, you'll experience pain and it'll force you to look at yourself. Check what your hypnotic rhythm is. Is the rhythm you're in and you really continue going about things, is it going to produce the results that you want or do you need to change things or do you need to improve your approach or move things around? And for me, that was certainly the case. So hopefully this was helpful for you today. You know, if you're drifting through life, you can certainly switch into a non-drifting mentality. And the way that we do that is through changing your hypnotic rhythm. Your hypnotic rhythm is your habits, the way that you're thinking, the way that you're approaching things. So if you don't like how things are going, it is within your power to fix it and you can certainly do it. So don't forget to like and subscribe, especially since I think these episodes, I'm really looking forward to them. I'm going to really look at improving my skills with um, cinematics, my ability to deliver value, um, and really some tangible items and material, whether it's training or it's mindset, and also creating a better community with you guys and the people I'll be interviewing. Um, but hopefully this helps. So like, subscribe, comment, feel free to ask me any questions, and I will see you next time. Peace.